keynote address. Now we're talking about how organizations can harness AI ethically. Well, we have with us uh, Katie King, who's, going, who's just joined us, and uh, she is the CEO AI in business. Well, Katie King is a published author, keynote speaker, and consultant on artificial intelligence and digital business transformation. Katie has 30 years of consulting experience and has advised many of the world's leading brands and business leaders, including Richard Branson, Orange Accenture, PA Consulting, Huawei, Arsenal Football Club, and Harrods. She's the CEO of uh, Zoo Dikers and AI in Business. Katie is also a member of the UK government all-party parliamentary group task force for the enterprise adoption of AI. So well, Katie, it's an absolute honor to host you today. Thank you for joining us. Over to you. Thank you, Bhavana. Lovely to be here. Thank you for that wonderful introduction as well. Are you seeing my screen? Okay, that should all be, uh, be good. Yes, Katie, I can see Excellent. you. Excellent. Fantastic. Great. So this is a subject I'm really passionate about, how you can harness AI ethically. I think it's so important. Uh, as Bhavana said, I've, I've been in business for 30 years, uh, but more importantly, more recently in the last few years, I'm on the all-party parliamentary group. The work we do on AI in ethics takes in evidence from all over the world. So we're hearing regularly, not just from the book, I wrote this book, it took a year to write, and there's a lot of experts featured in this book talking about AI and ethics, but I'm also on the editorial board of the AI and ethics journal. So what you're hearing from me today is not just my, they're not just my thoughts, but those of many, many people. And this week, uh, we had this evidence session with the UK Minister for Digital and for Culture, interviewed by Stephen Metcalf from the All Party Parliamentary Group. And we talked about this very subject, about the pragmatic and the responsible adoption of AI and how you need to lead by example with diversity, with social inclusion, it's important to discuss some of the very contentious technologies that are behind facial and emotion recognition and how all over the world people need to be up to speed with digital skills and equipping them so that they can all take advantage of the financial benefits and by knowing more about it have a reduced fear of the technology as well. So that work is um, pretty groundbreaking. This is Ada. She's the world's first ultra realistic humanoid AI robot artist. I'm doing a bit of work with her and she has a very strong message too. When she travels around the world talking to people, she has a very highly sophisticated robotic arm and creates some incredible paintings and drawings. And she says her founder, Aidan Mellor, talks about we must consider that important human man machine interaction and carefully think about the choices that we make for our future. I think that's a very, very powerful message. So I just want to share with you some of these big issues. This is the latest research from IDC, which is saying, you know, what's actually holding back full scale adoption of AI in lots of countries. And one of the big areas is trustworthy AI. It's becoming a really important business imperative. So you can see here in the third bullet point down, fairness, robustness, transparency, full disclosure are absolutely essential if we're going to have trustworthy AI and we're going to see AI uh, happening at scale across the organizations. EY also talks about it and these are very, very recent articles. This was just this past week talking about how around the world, you know, people are having to sacrifice their privacy to facilitate machine learning and how important it is really to, to have that trustworthy you know, AI. Uh, if we have poor governance, that will erode trust. So companies, companies, countries all around the world need to ensure that that governance exists. We're partnering with an organization called Foundtech based in Cyprus, and they did a survey just recently uh, in the UK with 2000 uh, UK adults. And you can see some of the statistics here, 73% of those over 55 supporting the introduction of extra guidelines to improve safety, feeling is it important for AI to be held responsible for its mistakes? You know, where does the, uh, where does it actually lie that responsibility? Um, so that's, again, these are all really important debates that all countries need to be having. 
But I think what we absolutely need to do is to have that explainable AI. There's a clause within GDPR that talks about the black box of AI systems. And we need, if we're an insurance company, if we're a bank and a decision is made by the AI, it's really important that the recipient of that decision, whether it's a refusal of a bank loan or refusal of some insurance, they need to know why that decision has been reached and not fall into the trap of it being based on some bias that's been fueled by the actual AI. This is in the banking environment. We've got the Economist Intelligence Unit saying that data that leads to discrimination against individuals is one of the most prominent risks for banks using AI. So these are some of the real concerns that we need to address when we come to deploy AI um, at any kind of scale. When we're talking about harnessing AI um, for good and ethically, um, there's some incredible plans, there's some incredible um, projects that I'm seeing all around the world. So here's one, I've been doing some work um, in, in India and Sri Lanka, and here's the first recipient of a Microsoft AI for accessibility program. This is all about funding organizations that use AI for people with disability using Microsoft Azure services for training. So exciting projects where some of the leading tech titans, the leading organizations like Google and Microsoft are doing some great work. And here we've got the Secondary Education Board in India announcing a partnership with IBM. And this is about introducing AI into the classroom. So the knowledge, the issues we're talking about, the bias, the transparency, the privacy, the trust, we need to be educating our young people not just the data scientists, but the other people that are going to go into marketing, the law, construction, all industry sectors, they need to understand it. And it's for that reason that I set up this project, pro bono, no profit, no sponsorship. It's just a straightforward me inviting in. And it's the first pilot is, has, has completed. And you can see some of the um, presenters there. So these people have given up their time, you know, for the project that I've pulled together with some schools. And these are all inclusive these are diversity and inclusion schools where they are not fee paying they have children who are deaf they have children of all walks of life and they're benefiting not just students of data science but students of all subjects learning about privacy and ethics which played a very big part the alan turing institute talked about that pwc talked about it as well so what we want to do um, is ensure that um, we train the AI to detect these inequalities. And you can see a, a program here where Google Street View, the AI is trained on all of these images and it's based on statistics about income, health, crime, housing. And the idea there is to, to train it so that you don't have that um, policing and that inequality actually happening. So I mentioned my work. So I pulled together um, a book with a scorecard for success, which I'll come on to in a moment, which has all kinds of ethics and AI related activity there. But I think prior to that, a very big announcement that happened uh, just recently, last month um, on the 16th of June, is that now we have a global partnership on AI, not just the UK, but a number of other OECD uh, led countries have formed this global partnership on AI, the GPAI. And it's the idea of this body, and I'm so pleased to see that it's international. The idea of this is that we oversee the responsible development of AI. So examining, for example, how it can aid recovery, as we've been hearing in the previous panel around COVID. Um, and there are all these countries that are looking at responsible, human-centric development of AI uh, in a way that's actually consistent consistent with human rights, with freedoms, with democracy, and so on. So it's very, very exciting to see uh, that activity actually happening, to see that that's a global initiative. And then just finally, um, the work that I did, so my book, as I mentioned, it, it's a collection of case studies from all over the world, uh, big brands, numerous technology disruptors, and lots of academics in all industry sectors, lots of different job functions. And so all around the world, people have got these wonderful, well, they've got failures and successes with AI and machine learning. But what I pulled together as part of that 
is this scorecard for success. And you can see there in number nine that one of the, the big focus areas, not just for me, but as a consensus of all of the wonderful people that I interviewed, you know, for that piece of evidence that I gave, which was a year of work, is just how important it is to understand ethics to work with your industry trade body, to input to the frameworks. Because what's very clear is that uh, I've been training and, and consulting people for you know, nearly 15 years on social media before it became popular, before it became very well used. And over that period of time, the law slowly caught up with the changing developments. And that's what we can't afford to happen with AI. The law's got to be hand in hand, you know, new laws, existing laws. And so you in your countries, in your trade bodies, in your um, organizations need your own code of conduct. You can't just wait for all of this to happen. You need to feel and be responsible, have your own mandates, be compliant and lead that path and so this scorecard here number nine is part of um, what, how that's important and what you do is you give yourself a score of naught to five out of these 10 areas and so you have the opportunity to get a score of 50 and the idea is that under 20 you're traditional in the middle there 20 to 35 points you're transitioning with ai and anything from 35 upwards you're transformational and you can see there in the first two how important it is, and this is so relevant to ethics and AI for good and so on, you need to have the right mindset. You need to, be, you need to have the buy-in of the management team and then the board. Number three, you need to be doing a business case, preferably a business case that has some uh, philanthropic, some AI for good, some good corporate social responsibility linked to it as well. And then what you're doing on the top of that is doing some proofs of concept, collaborating, not just working in your ivory tower in isolation, but collaborating with your trade body, with your partners, with your own other organization. You know, for example, the marketing team, the finance team, the customer experience team, the sales team, they need to be talking. You need to develop number six, the talent you know, you need to be thinking, do I, do I outsource this? Do I reskill and retrain? And that's part of that program. And as, and as part of that, you need to be training people on the wider impact of issues such as explainability, fairness, ethics, and so on. And that should be number seven, an integral part of your culture as well. And a culture that Number eight, keeps innovating, you know, being open for engagement and agile and so on, which we hear a lot about. And then number 10 is the final one, which is really we need this strategic roadmap in place. We need to be aware of the funding so some of those programs that I mentioned there with regard to in India, I'm sure there are similar ones in Malaysia, support from the government, support from some of the major global multinational organizations as well. So, you know, all of this is, is really, really important. Don't wait for others to, you know, to show you the way. Be within your organizations, open, um, you know, to creating your own mandates. Look to the work that, you know, I'm on the all-party parliamentary group. There's some exciting work happening there. In 2018, they created a five-point code of conduct. But I think, as I mentioned, just, just there with the latest global initiative, look to the work that they're doing the Future of Life Institute and other organizations like that. So uh, yeah, coming to the end, a nice short keynote today, just 15 minutes. So wanted to keep to time, but um, delighted to be on, on this summit. I've worked with Trescom before and had the opportunity to get on a plane and travel around the world with them. But it's fantastic during the pandemic to be able to deliver these kinds of um, sessions virtually as well. So uh, thank you very much. And Bhavana, thank you ever so much for, for hosting me. Thank you so much, Katie King, for being a part of the World AI Show. It was incredible hosting you as well.